Let us offer our consecration to the Lord. Lord, we offer up to you this day that your name be glorified as we work our way into Christmas weekend. And as we work towards Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, we ask that we may be open to all that you call us to do. And we ask that we look forward to be witnesses of your faith of your truth, and of your love, especially during this Christmas season. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Well, you know, there's a fascinating part of today's gospel. First of all, remember, if you're looking at your daily missal, whichever might that be, Word Among Us, Magnificat, Bible.usccb.org, if there are any others, um, or just looking at the reading, today's reading, of course, is for the 23rd of December, which is always the same as I've explained to you all week. Um, And this is where we have Elizabeth is giving birth to John. There's kind of a little humor. Always understand that there is little bits of humor in the Bible completely. And always remember that one of the signs uh, that someone has to demonstrate to be uh, someone who you can recognize as being holy is they have a sense of humor. Uh, occasionally you meet people who seek to be very close to God and they have no sense of humor whatsoever. None, because they take uh, their faith way too seriously and that's not a good sign. You might say, well, shouldn't everyone take their faith too seriously? Well, okay, you should take everything seriously to the point, but you don't want to take it seriously so that you actually don't live the faith. You're caught up in something. I remember there was someone who everything he did, he took over seriously. And usually, well, I'll give you a better example. Um, oh, this is back when I was in the Navy and they told me the story of this guy who wanted to be a Marine. And he would show up at the recruiting station all dressed up as Marine and, he, you know, in the in the combat fatigues and he always wanted to be a Marine and he always painted his face as they did in some of the cameras line. He just really this gung ho Marine. Well, they said he he washed out in boot camp and not surprising because he had this image of what it means to be a Marine and he probably clashed with the real world because it, it just not is like that. I mean, I, I'm not a Marine, never been a Marine, um, but I was in the Navy. And, you know, there is the Navy and then there is how it's portrayed in many places. And it's not exactly the same. So um, because the real world is real world. Well, the same thing. And people may take everything so seriously that they miss what the faith is really about. And part of it is a sense of humor. So one of the things that's fascinating here in today's gospel is we have uh, Zechariah who cannot speak. Remember, that was the sign we saw earlier in the week where he was made mute because, again, as I explained, it wasn't a punishment. It was a sign to him and everyone else that something seriously had happened. And remember, the angel, Angel Gabriel, told him that they were going to name a son and his name would be John. And Zechariah and obviously Elizabeth understood the child's name is John. So what happens is that the people who are surrounding Elizabeth and John when the child is born, they say, what will be his name? And Elizabeth says, John. And all these people who, if you really look at it, have it's none of their business, but that's what they do. I don't know. I wasn't part of their culture at the time. It's none of their business. Like, whoa, wait a minute. How can you call him? No one's been called John. Who are you? What are you? You know, all this other stuff. And so they ask the father. Now, I'm sure if there are people listening who are in the feminist community, they might go, yeah, yeah, look at that. They don't take her word for it. They still have to go to the the father who, by the way, doesn't speak. (laughs) And you look at that and say, you know, some people can make points here, you know, the whole bit. So anyway, they go, oh, wait a minute, we're going to ask the father. And so he does respond, and with that, his mouth is open, and he gives he gives praise to God, as we see. And that's important, because remember, he's been mute for about nine months, and the first words out of his mouth are praise of God. So something came upon him that doesn't turn him into being, well, I've been 
forced to be silent for nine months as opposed to celebrating what powerful things the Lord has done. And they also realize, and this is something, this comes from the Gospel of Luke, and this is something you see in Luke. Father Rufus Pereira said that if you really look at Luke, it is more focused on the women than it is the men, and that's a classic example of bringing that out. You know, they, well, he doesn't even speak, and we're going to ask him because we're not going to take the word of the mother. And you go, well, that's something to look at. Why is that happening here? And, of course, later we see in Christianity, um, you know, we we see that passage that people um, misunderstand where it says wives be submissive to their husbands. But what it also means is husbands love their wives. In other words, this is not a dictatorship, but the two of them in serving the Lord, they do what the Lord calls them to do. And they serve the Lord, and it's not a case of, well, it says right there that wives should be submissive. You know, as I, the expression I use all the time, wives be submissive to your husband, so are you, get me another beer. No, that's not what it means at all. It means this whole new understanding of the role of husband and wife that we see, and we start to see it in this particular reading, because it's Elizabeth who announces the name of the child, which actually came from the angel, and which therefore came from God. We're going to talk more on the other side of the break. You're listening to St. Anthony overnight from St. Anthony Parish in Alston, Massachusetts on this Christmas Eve Eve. We'll be right back right after this. You can now leave a message for us, which we can air and discuss on this program. Just call 617-297-7452. That's 617-297-7452. 617-297-7452. Feel free to call, leave a comment, a question, or even feedback, and we may play it on the air. I can discuss your comment or question as well, so give that a try. 617-297-7452. 617-297-7452. I want to call your attention to Catholic TV, which offers great faith-filled, family-friendly programming 24 hours a day. You can find your cable channel at www.getcatholictv.com and you can watch online on the free apps or check out the YouTube channel. Daily Mass, Rosaries, the Divine Mercy Chaplet, and the Our Lady of Perpetual Help Novena are all available online and on demand. Check out catholictv.com. And don't forget our own website, catholicaudiomedia.com. That's catholicaudiomedia.com. Check out our website. Check out the archives of the show. Check out our Substack newsletter. Check out all these things over at catholicaudiomedia.com. Well, we're talking about this powerful passage and uh, that whole aspect of uh, this, this fascinating little conversation that happens where uh, Elizabeth says that John the Baptist's name will be named John, and they go, well, you know, no one, you know, you do ask that question, well, what business is it of yours? This is what we decided to name our child. And then, of course, they go to John, uh, they go to Zechariah, and Zechariah affirms the words of uh, Elizabeth, and in doing so, he then starts uh, proclaiming the word of God. He starts speaking for the first time in nine months. And it, it, again, it's just a powerful message. Now, one of the things that we understand, which we'll be talking about later on in the Easter, uh, Christmas, I keep saying Easter, I don't know why, the Christmas season, is that John basically becomes like a feral child. They're both older, and Elizabeth, according to, this is an Orthodox tradition, now, This would be described as apocryphal teaching. In other words, you're not going to find this in the Bible. This was part of what was understood um, by the Christian community at the time. And this is something that has been absorbed through the Orthodox community who teaches, um, who uh, who apparently has this story. And so you're not going to find this in the Bible. But what is understood is that Elizabeth dies of old age, but prior to that, uh, Zechariah is murdered. So we're talking within a couple of years is murdered by Herod's children for not saying where John is. And then, of course, when we get towards Lent and Easter and obviously the baptism of the Lord, which is at the end of the Christmas season, we learn that John basically grows up in the wilderness 
by eating uh, locusts and wild honey. And in doing so, um, he basically is a feral child. But we're going to talk about that more later. But fascinating. So this all is a fascinating story. And at the same time, I want you to look at that because we see Zechariah and we see Elizabeth. And we have an understanding of all they did throughout their lives to be servants of the Lord. And we have an understanding of what they did in the life of John. And if you look at their whole lives, you would say, well, they had tragic lives. They were, they had tragic lives. They had no children until old age. Uh, When they did, they had John and, uh, but in the process, Zechariah was left mute. And then Zechariah was eventually murdered in uh, the temple because he wouldn't give where the location of John, the child that they wanted so much. And then Elizabeth died soon after of natural causes and the poor child that they wanted all their lives ends up growing up in the wilderness. And you would say, why? These were tragic lives. But they would turn to you and say, no, these were blessed lives. Kind of an interesting thing to look at. And maybe it's something as you approach Christmas and everything coming on with Christmas, kind of look at some of the blessings that Others might say, I'm not so sure those are blessings, but how you could interpret them as blessings. We can take a look at that actually at another time as well. In the meantime, have yourself a Merry Christmas. Have yourself a blessed Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, and we will talk to you on in the octave of Christmas. Have a blessed weekend. If you would like to support our program, please consider a donation to St. Anthony Parish in Alston, Massachusetts. There are several ways to consider this. One is to purchase any of our merchandise, which you can find at the shopping tab at catholicaudiomedia.com. That's catholicaudiomedia.com. There are coffee mugs there. There's also my latest book, Encounter Christ in Your Humanity, all of which you can find at the shopping tab at catholicaudiomedia.com. You can also donate to the show directly through either the Donate tab, also at catholicaudiomedia.com, or by sending a donation through the U.S. Postal Service with your questions and comments at 43 Holton Street, Alston, Massachusetts, 02134. That's St. Anthony Parish, 43 Holton Street, Alston, Massachusetts, 02134. Finally, the best way you can support our parish is to attend Mass on Sundays at 10 o'clock and be a part of our parish. We thank you for any support you would like to give to St. Anthony Parish in Alston, Massachusetts, the sponsoring parish for this media outreach to Catholics and other Christians in the WROL, WEZE, and podcast listening audience. In Cristo vivimos.